Hi there, Chris here from Digix, back again this week with another video update of what I've been working on with regards to Spectrum. Um, this week we have a few updates, including hardware wallet support, offline signing, and some general user interface updates. We're also releasing a public demo of the existing Spectrum release. Before we start, just a quick warning to explain that yes, Spectrum is still in development. Do not use it for significant amounts of value, and it's a bad idea to have the same keys that you generate or use with Spectrum to be having anything to do with significant amounts of value in terms of Ether or any kind of token on the mainnet. First off, let's take a quick look at the configuration options. These have not changed much since last time. Um, essentially, you can just edit the network options, change the colors. I think since last time we've added the ability to have um, blockchain explorer URLs, so automatically linking to the correct uh, blockchain explorer for a particular asset or address, for example. Similar to before, we have a bunch of tokens that are available on each of these networks. Okay, so jumping into the key stores tab, and by default, no key stores are created. So we're going to have to either import or create some ourselves. This is the new user interface for the key store creation process. Right now, we support three different types of key store single accounts, which are the typical version three encrypted key store that are used in Parity and Geth, as well as the Ledger wallet, which is a hardware wallet, popular hardware wallet, and cold accounts. Now, these are for offline signing, and I'll go through all three of these in this little demo. So first of all, single accounts, pretty straightforward. You give it a name, enter a password, and select which networks you want to associate with. Uh, you can select the tokens once that network is selected. You can also manually edit the encryption options to enter a custom private key or change the crypto parameters, including the iteration count, which is essentially how long it'll take to decrypt and encrypt. So you can play around with this if you're in security, but by default it's hidden. So once we create that key store, it gets added and is associated with all those accounts. And you can edit the non-crypto settings at any time. You can also import the version 3 key store, which is just a, a JSON file. And it's the password, and you can re-import it. So now we have two accounts, one that I just created and one imported. You'll see here there's a little QR code icon which you can click on to show the QR code of the account and then click on the QR code to show what it's displaying. And this will be used later on in the cold storage accounts. So let's create the next type of wallet, the hardware wallet. In this case, I have a Ledger Nano with a 1.2 firmware on it. So once the Ledger Nano is connected and it's enabled with browser mode and opened in the Ethereum app, it will automatically detect the wallet and show a list of addresses. You can load virtually an infinite number of addresses from a single Ledger account. You select the addresses you want to enable in Spectrum, type in a name for each of these accounts, and set the networks as seen before in the version three option. Let's enable three accounts here. And let's enable DGX Coven, the testnet DGX token. Okay, so now they're added and associated, Spectrum will automatically detect the balances that are associated with those accounts. And at this point, even if you unplug the Ledger Nano, you'll still be able to see the balances of those accounts, but you just won't be able to sign transactions with them. Let's add the final type of key store now. This one is the cold account. This would be a reference to an Ethereum address somewhere else that's not necessarily available or online. But as you'll see, you'll be able to sign transactions nonetheless using an air-gapped QR code. So first we need to add those addresses. We can either paste manually the address into this box or we can scan the QR code. So I'm gonna do that first. So here I've got Spectrum open on my phone and I'm gonna copy the QR code that you saw before. And there's one added and let's do another one. And number two, there we go. 
So we've just added two accounts to the cold storage options. We hit done and they're automatically added. We'll just give them a name and then edit the network config for that account. We'll just add DGX Coven for each for now. So now we have those two accounts, we can hit OK. And Spectrum will once again automatically pick up the balances of those accounts. The secondary account doesn't have any balance right now because it's a brand new account. With all our accounts added, we can now sign some transactions. First, let's send some Coven testnet ether with the regular version 3 encrypted key store. We click the token we want to send, in this case, Keth, Coven Ether. And you can see here a nicer interface for displaying who's it going to and who it's from. You get a list of existing addresses. So let's send it to the new account that we created. And let's send uh, one Coven Ether to this new account. Hit OK. We're presented with a nicer user interface and a standardized view for every different type of transaction that you can make. And you can also flip down the details box to show the kind of advanced information about that particular transaction. So let's enter the password to sign the transaction. It gets signed and broadcast. And once it's mined, it gets confirmed. Just to prove it's a real transaction, we can show it in the Etherscan. Next, let's take a look at the hardware wallet. So same exact interface as before. This time we're signing with a hardware wallet. This is just a quick demo of what happens if you put in an invalid checksum address. It gives you a nice warning. The other option is scanning a QR code. So directly within the sending interface, you can scan uh, a code and it will automatically add it to the to field. As you can see here, it's the same code we scanned before, so it automatically picks up that it's the secondary phone account. Let's send one Ether to this account. Hit OK. Now, because I have my Ledger Nano attached to this interface, I get a transaction confirmation on the Ledger Nano device, and I have the option of confirming or rejecting that transaction on the device itself. So at this point, I press Confirm. And it automatically receives the signed transaction and broadcasts it. This transaction gets published to the blockchain and once again is uh, confirmed. So as you can see, it's from my hardware wallet address. And it gets received in the secondary phone account address. The next type of account is the cold storage account. And to sign transactions using these accounts, we use the signer interface on the device. So on my phone, I'll be opening up this signer tab to receive the transaction information via QR code, sign it, and then relay it back to my laptop using QR code once again. So here's what it looks like on my phone. Apologies for the uh, damaged screen. I intentionally damaged the screen to create worst case scenario conditions for QR code scanning, and it still works. So yeah, this is the signer interface just displayed on my phone. So if we go back to the key stores tab and try to make a transaction with the secondary phone account, Let's send it to the ledger and we'll send a small amount of Coven Ether. Hit OK. So now we'll be displayed with this different interface. Instead of showing a, a password entry box, we're shown a QR code to scan using the phone, using the signer interface. We can also see the details. So at this point, I'll be scanning the screen with my phone to pick up this QR code to get the transaction information. Once I have that, uh, I'll see the transaction information on my phone, as shown. And I can sign this transaction by entering the password. I hit Send Transaction, it signs, and it immediately shows the signed transaction in a QR code, which can then be read by the laptop and instantly broadcast the transaction. So now that's confirmed. We can see that indeed the secondary phone account has sent the transaction to the ledger. So that's probably the easiest way of managing offline signing using QR codes. The whole process is done with 
a few clicks and entering a password. So there's no manual copy and pasting of any data, it's all just scanning QR codes. And just quickly, once again, we'll do the same thing, uh, but proving that it works with DGX. It's not just basic transactions, you can also sign any kind of transaction, including contract um, interaction transactions. So we'll send a few DGX covens over to a new account. And again, go through the same process, signing the transaction using the cold storage wallet. But this time, it's using a contract data instead of just a simple value transfer. So we scan, once again, scan the QR code with our phone, sign the transaction on our phone, and then show the signed transaction to the laptop. It signs it, it sends it, and boom. We just sent Coven Ether using QR codes and air gapping. So as mentioned, there is a uh, new release of Spectrum available to the public for playing around with. Please don't use real assets on it. And we will be updating in the near future. And stay tuned for more updates on Spectrum. Next week I'll be working on some non-Spectrum related things. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.